Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I don't know where you are in the world, but hopefully one of those salutations shall be appropriate. I'm Andrew. Today I want to teach you how to find the zeros and give the multiplicity of each zero of the following function, 3x raised to the fourth plus 6x raised to the third plus 3x raised to the second. So the first thing is to, we should really find the zeros, okay? And we should therefore remember zeros is just another word for x-intercept. Um, so what we want to do is we want to factor this on out, okay? We want to try to factor this somehow. So what I look to is I look to find the greatest common factors here, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write f of x, and I realize that the greatest common factor amongst each of those three is actually going to be a 3x squared, right? You can reduce each value by 3, and you can also reduce each value by x squared, so I'm going to pull out uh, 3x squared, okay? And then what you want to think about is you divide the first term by what you just pulled out, 3x squared, and what are you left with? The 3s would cancel, and you subtract the 4, you subtract, excuse me, the 2 from the 4, so you're left with then x raised to the 2. Plus then divide this now by 3x squared, and what you're left with is that would be 2, right? And then 3 minus 2 is going to be 1, so that's just x to the first. You don't need to write the x to the fir you know, first power there, but you need to write the x. So that takes care of that. And then last but not least, divide this by 3x squared, and obviously the whole thing just cancels. Now don't write a 0 because it's technically 1, right? What's 5 divided by 5? Hopefully not 0, right? It's 1, okay? Now, I have basically a factor here, all right? And I have a factor here. But I realize that one of them really is not... Uh, one of them really is not uh, fully factored, so to speak, right? This is a quadratic, so we can fully factor this. Now, to fully factor it, remember, we're asking ourselves to find the factors. We're asking ourselves, what are two numbers that are multiplied to positive, that multiply to positive one, but that yet add to positive two, right? And I think you're saying, well, x should be then positive one in both cases, right? And that's how you factor it, okay? x should be a positive one when you factor it. It's not the x value, but it's the... Uh, it's not the zero yet, but that's the factor, okay? You can also use the calculator to check yourself. If you want, go to program. I have a video on how to program your uh, calculator to handle quadratic equations. It makes it easy so you can double check yourself, right? So for letter, you know, for the A value, remember, it's a coefficient of the x squared term, so that's just a 1, so you plug in 1. Okay, the B value is going to be a positive 2. And then the C value is a positive 1. Now, when you hit enter, this gives you the x values, meaning that x will be equal to negative 1. That's not what it's, you can reverse the sign now, okay? Whatever values you get here output in your calculator, if you want to find the factors, just reverse the sign, okay? And you'll see how this is going to work out to be x is equal to negative 1 eventually, all right? But now what I realize is that I'm just going to copy this down, and I realize that these two are identical. Now, for the purposes of finding the multiplicity, what you want to do is you want to combine these now into a single factor, basically, with a power, because this will help us identify what the multiplicity is. Okay, so what I realize is that I have basically two or more factors, you know, more or less, right? Or two or more zeros, I should really say. I really have two or more zeros, okay? Now, I'm going to set each of these now equal to zero. Why are we doing that? Well, I have a whole 20 or so videos dedicated to specific problems on specific questions, and I explain every one of those in detail, why we find the zeros, or how, how we go about finding the zeros, and why we approach it the way we do. Um, it's also, remember, zeros are also known as x-intercepts, so search this playlist on our channel, and uh, you'll have plenty of examples if you want an in-depth analysis. But what I'm going to do is set each of these now factors basically equal to zero. So it's 3x squared is equal to zero, and then I'm going to set x plus 1 squared equal to zero. Now, you technically don't really need the squared, but, you know, we'll, in either side, but we'll, 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 We'll use it, okay? So we're going to divide both sides by 3 here, right, to solve for x, and then it's going to be x squared. 0 divided by 3 is just 0. Square root both sides, and the square root of 0 is going to be just 0. So that should be one of the zeros. In other words, this should be the x value of one of the x-intercepts. So I'm going to bring that on up to the top, all right? And now we're going to do the same thing. Square root both sides to get rid of the square. When you do that, you're just going to be left with x plus 1 is equal to 0. Subtract the 1 on over from both sides. And then what you're going to get is you're going to get x is going to be equal to negative 1. And that should be one of the other zeros, or aka one of the other values of x of the x-intercept. Now, we're done with finding the zeros. The next step is then to find the multiplicity of each zero. And that's the significance of doing this step. 
basically where you have everything in factored form and anything that's identical, you're going to try to combine and produce you know, the exponent. And the reason why is because the multiplicity here, so let's say for this factor, right? For this factor, it gave us an x value of negative one. Whatever the exponent is now of that factor is gonna be equal to its multiplicity. It's really simple now. So it's going to be a two. Similarly, when we found the x value equal to zero or this zero value of the function, we found it from this term. What's the exponent there? Well, it's also a two. So that's gonna be the multiplicity, all right? That's the multiplicity is equal to two. So notice how we have even multiplicities on each, so we should expect similar behavior on each. So what you can do is you can now plot this function if you wanted. You can do 3x raised to the fourth, all right? Then plus 6x raised to the third, and then plus 3x squared. And go to zoom, I'm gonna go to zoom standard, let's see. Right, so I'm gonna zoom in now, hit two, hit enter. And as you can see now, we have two locations where the function touches the x-axis, right? We have a value right here. Now that looks very close, if not exactly, at negative one, right? That's what we said it should be. And we also have another value right here at x is equal to zero, and that's what we said it should be. And now notice how both uh, curves here basically just touch that x-axis and bounce, okay? They come down, they don't cross the x-axis, they touch it, but they just bounce. That's that is a pattern you will notice whenever you have even multiplicities. So notice how they bounce in both cases. The odd multiplicities will cross the x-axis. Now, why is that the case? I got a video dedicated to explaining exactly why that's the case. If you're curious and you really want to understand, check out the link in the description below. All right, I highly suggest you do view it because it will make this make a whole lot more sense. Um, and then all you got to do from here is practice. And guess what? Our whole channel is dedicated to practice. We have thousands of practice problems out there, not only in, you know, math, but chemistry and physics as well. And we got a whole lot of other stuff coming. So the best way to do well on your exams is to do a ton of practice. Don't only do the problems that the teacher assigns or your professor assigns, do more. That's what it took, at least for me, to become fluent in, you know, the, the courses I studied. And, uh, you know, for some people, they're, they're fortunately, maybe they have a gift that they can kind of just look at it, do it once, and they, they you know, they can replicate it every time. But, uh, you know, most of us, most of us mortals uh, don't have that ability, and therefore we have to practice a lot. All right? So that's what we kind of have a channel dedicated to, practice. And if you don't understand how to do the problem, guess what? We have a whole video solution for you explaining every single step of the process. So we try to make it as easy as possible. All right. So guys, thanks very much for tuning in. Appreciate it. I look forward to helping you out with more problems. And if you can, press those buttons. It helps our channel out a lot. Like, subscribe, maybe even tell some of your classmates. All right. We appreciate all your support. See you soon.